So one of the things that comes up all the time is how to do dynamic ropes, and chains, and leashes, and things like that. So a great way to do that is by using N hair. So I have a little scene here uh, with a little boat animation that I did and a piling for it to connect to. And um, there's a couple of ways you can set up that chain, that, that original curve. Um, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit because I know what I want. Um, but the important thing is, is that when you build your curve, you make sure that it's very straight, uh, not straight, sorry, evenly spaced uh, CVs along it. So what I often will do is hold down X and just, um, you know, make my curve that way. And in this case, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to try and be careful uh, with, with it in that I don't lose a lot of that spacing. So I'm going to take this and connect it to the front of my boat here. All right, that should be good. Um, and I'm just looking at those those CVs and I wanna make sure that they stay relatively evenly spaced. If I'm doing a rig, I'll build it straight and then put the rig into space, into the space that I want it to. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it um, like this and use it as my dynamic curve. So with the curve selected, I'm gonna to go to N hair Make selected curves dynamic. Open that option box up. And I'm going to reset this just so you see what I set up. So you have different output effects. Um, really, I'm not going to use paint effects for this, so just keep it on nerves curves. I'll just make a curve that's dynamic. And I don't need to attach to anything, and I don't, I don't have anything selected anyway. Um, actually, you know what? Let's try that. Let's see if it actually works. It might just do it right off the bat. Um, and I hit apply. Cool. So it did create a follicle for me over here. Uh, this red guy is the follicle. It's not in the perfect spot, but let's see what that gives us. I'm going to hit play and just let go. Let's say both ends for the attach here. Cool. All right, so first let's take a look at what what's going on here. So the follicle is what uh, holds your original curve and this is, if you're doing like a curve attract, you can make the curve kind of like try and goal to that curve. Uh, you can use this curve. But what I'm going to do in this case is just use the dynamic curve. So um, by default, you have, uh, if you don't have a follicle set up, um, it'll do both ends. And basically what that'll do is just point the curve in between the two. So let me hit play and see what we got. Cool. All right. I, want, I don't want to go past my, uh, my range there. So, but what you'll see is sometimes you get like a little bit of a, a strange bending. So see how it just falls over here. It's kind of got like a, a soft fall off. That becomes, that comes from the original settings on the hair system. So the hair system, what controls the dynamics of the curve. So I'm going to go to dynamic properties and under here where it says bend resistance, I'm going to put that to zero and watch the difference. You can see that that curve now has a nice loop through it and it's just soft between there. All right. So we hit play again and see what we get. Now the problem is when the boat starts rocking, the whole curve moves and it moves my whole entire dynamic curve. Well, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is go back to my follicle here and I'm going to turn off, I'm going to turn in the point lock to base only. Oops, I guess uh, tip only. I thought that would have been the base. Cool. Uh, so also not what we want, but we get a cool dynamic curve. And then I want to connect this part of the curve to the uh, piling over here. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. I'm going to do it with a um, constraint. So I'm going to grab a hold of those CVs and go to end constraint, transform constraint. And that's just a locator that sits there like that. And what that should do is hold my curve in place. Right? So now I can ignore my original curve. I'll hit play. You can see what it does. And right now we do have a lot of movement. And part of that is from the, the space scale of the nucleus node. And part of it is from the setup of what we're doing with the curve itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my nucleus node. And under scale attributes, I'm going to change my space scale to 0.1. The reason for that is normally it's not meters. So this will put me at centimeters because I have a very small scene. And you can see an immediate difference in how that works plays out. If I say make this like 0 0.01 like decimeters, 
you can see the difference there too. And I recently saw a YouTube where they just said, you know, play with these settings till you get what you like, which isn't a bad thing, I don't think. I don't mind that too much at all. Um, what I'm going to do is go to my hair system now and look at my dynamic properties, and maybe I'll set some stuff in here. So uh, mass is probably fine. I am going to give it just a touch of dampening and see what that does. So that looks a little bit better to me. Uh, incidentally, while I'm here, I can use my presets. If I want to save this end hair preset out, I can, you know, save that. And so next time I'm working with this, I can just go to my presets and I'll have, uh, you can't see it, it's off the screen, but I have the ability to, oh, can I tear this off? I can't tear it off. Um, the ability to re select that and replace my settings. All right, and the last thing I want to do is just give this something to render with. So you can render with curves with uh, a number of different renderings, uh, render engines. In this case, I'm just going to put geometry on there. So I have the rope profile, which is what I used oops, for my uh, dock rope, and I'm going to make that match. So I'm just going to select that, select the output curve, and do a surfaces extrude. And I just go down right, right side every single time. So tube, path, component, profile normal. And now I'm going to get that curve on there. And now I have a nice little dock rope holding my dinghy in place. And if I take that dinghy and say, you know, we'll start here and then maybe on key that and on the way back, on that way back, I'll just exaggerate that and bring it back a little bit more, see if we can stretch that dock rope to its limits. Oh, not quite. Let's go a little farther. And you see, I do get a little bit of stretch in there. Um, you can work on that again with the hair system. So if I go in here, um, you do have what's called a no stretch clip. But what that does is it sort of truncates the, the uh, curve. And so you see or how far the curve will go and you see you get this disconnect. If it's off screen, no problems. Obviously, if it's off screen, it's not a problem anyway. Uh, but uh, what's probably better is you could just pump up your stretch resistance just a little bit. Let's see what that gives us. Yeah, it's a little bit better. I'm still getting stretching, but it will be negligible and you shouldn't be able to see what's going on there. That boat really wants to get free. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, if I take this boat and let's say this was just a, a center piling with no um, no dock attached and we start getting wrapped around that piling obviously that's not great animation let's take it a little bit further all right let's see what that gives us Oh, that's horrible animation. But what I'm going for here is that you see that the rope goes right through that piling. So one last thing I can do is uh, select that piling, go to um, end cloth and say create passive collider. And what that's going to do is create a relationship between our curve and that piece of geometry so that they now don't uh, penetrate each other or they collide with each other, I should say. In fact, I'm actually really kind of liking this. So I'm going to go to my boat here. Where was it? That key is way too fast. So let's take that over here. And I am scrubbing, and that's going to mess up the dynamics, and that's just fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. When you render this out, you're going to want to make sure that you um, bake this anyway. And I'll show you how to do that. I don't know why I'm getting that huge glitch in the boat there. That's weird. I'm pretty sure it's just visual. Yeah, it's got to be. But let's just double check. I don't have a funky key. Oh my god, do I? 
I see no... I don't see any animation. Excuse me for a second while I look at this. I got nothing. It's just a weird glitch. Um, so let me try something. I'm gonna... Let's see, what am I in? Oh, it looks like I'm in DG. Let me go to Parallel. Let's go to Serial. Play this again. There we go. That's better. And incidentally, now with caching, um, you can't. You can cache the the animation. You can't catch the dynamics yet. Hopefully, that'll come soon. All right. Cool. So I'm gonna turn caching off. And I'm going to save this. Actually, let's just incrementally save it. Oh, I don't have it here. Oh, there it is. Ugh. That's what you get. All right. And I want to do is grab that curve and go to my end cache, create a new end cache, end object. It's going to fill most of this in for you automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. I'll just hit apply. It's going to go do its thing. It's like baking it out. Um, but now as you see, I can scrub it and I get the animation that I want. And you'll notice it does some kind of nice things. Oh, I should probably make that other, the rest of the rope dynamic as well. All right, let's try that. So let's take this and add it to our passive collider list. I do, to see what I'm doing, have to go back to that curve, go to end cache, and either delete or redo the cache. So in this case, I'm going to delete it. And I'm actually going to delete the files off disk. You can keep them around if you want to reconnect them later. So let me see what that looks like. All right, it's passing through, which is not good. Uh, I did make it rigid, didn't I? Oh, maybe I didn't actually do it. Uh, maybe because of, why is it doing that? I don't think it's because of the history. Did I get an error? No mesh select. Uh, wait. Really? Huh. I don't know that to be true, but I guess because it's a nerve surface, I need to convert it. So I'm going to go here and convert nerve to polygons. Uh, hide my other rope, take this one, and let's just make it look a little bit better. Uh, quads are good. I usually do three and three. And I do first band number of isoforms, first band number of isoforms. Cool. Now let's take this and there we go. That rigid showed up. So now it should come on collide with it. Now you see how it's going through it just a little bit. What you can do there is you can actually change the uh, collision thickness of your curve. So if I go to my curve here, open up the editor, editor, actually I'll go to the hair system, and under collisions I can turn on, and self collides off by default. If you were doing like a coiling rope or something like that, you would turn that on. Um, but I'm going to turn my solver display on to collision thickness, and this is I'm found a little bit buggy, so if I just um, collide with offset, bring that up a little bit. Sometimes you have to go, re you know, I'm just hit cranking the uh, back button. Uh, but now you should see that when it collides with that geo, it doesn't go through it, right? Well, that is a little bit because I I need a little more curves on there, um, and that's coming from my original curve and how many points it has on it. If I give it more points, I'll get more edges along there for it to, to bend. I can also do that to my collision object, show its collision thickness, and actually I can make that just a little thicker. And you can change the colors if you have multiple objects in the scene. You want to be able to see them colliding. That's better. And of course, you can turn those off so you don't see them anymore. Oh, that's funny. It's not grabbing the hair system one. Look at that, it keeps grabbing it. 
just be aware that you have the right object. There we go. Whose boat is this boat? All right, cool. Um, yeah, and then I can go back in, grab that curve, redo my cache. I'm not even going to open it. Uh, I guess, come on. Oh, there we go. And just let it run. And I'm ready to render. Ship it. All right, so I hope that was helpful, and uh, see you later.